like so binder contrast. So I actually had like binder ha um, that were five inches, so like very thick. And then here, me and my on my notes. Usually I shall print out article and then I go highlight even though I kill trees. This is why I'm my new environmental science. <laughs> so, uh, like, I go, if you can see like zoom in, I take notes like every single page and then yeah, I go like print out and then I add. So make sure you add a lot. For what? How do you find meaning up? PhD mentor Lao Kao Kapan Kung Nam, you love you got my night, Kao Why would I take you seriously? Oh, wow, I already, like, you already, you high school, you're already, like, quite young. How many I've done except for once you've been learning in the phone? I keep with what I can just press. Okay, that what? Me, my first lab, Kong Sha, I UT Harvard Medical School. So, after reading a lot of articles in my field, I realized that there were a lot of repeating names. So, well, there's going to be a lot of, like, the same researchers in the, that field you're interested in. So I started writing down my authors as well as the corresponding email. You can find this at the end of the article. They usually have a section for corresponding author email. And then I got wrote down the professor I was interested in and then the email. And then I eventually like wanted to email this person named Dr. Richard Liu. So what I did was note I emailed back in like beginning of January. So you can email whenever. It doesn't have to be the summer. I know a lot of people say, do it May or whatever, it doesn't really matter. So in your email, a lot of main points. You want to make sure to introduce yourself, just like say your name, say your school, and then refer to the title of the uh, work they were interested in. So like I mentioned before, I was reading the one journal article, and then I really liked, they had a suggestion for future research. And then I got key way of how to do that future research. I got bonk how. And then that's the second one. Refer to the specific title of the work. For what Professor Kong they sometimes have like 100 publications. You say, I really like the publication of yours. They go, I, I, I like which one. I have so many. And then you ask questions about their work, or like you can attach like potential research avenue to you thought. Yeah, I got And then you clearly ask for their mentorship in their work. I know a lot of people try not to do this, though. Well, I think that you want to just stick to the point. It's fair to you and your mentor to just say what you want from this. So notice in my email, I literally said summer research mentorship in like the subject title. Oh, well, if they say no, then you're just gonna like waste your time, Shima. And you can always find someone else. And another section is you want to include the skills you can contribute to their lab. Once again, coming after out someone T could be a burden to them, right? So if you could code, say you can code. Like, what can you code in Python? Or uh, do you have spreadsheet skills? Can you work with Excel, like SPSS, or any wet lab skills you put in? I, at that time, was a freshman. I really didn't have anything. I played around with SPSS. I could do, like, Google Sheets and Excel, so I put that in. And I even put in that, like, oh, I, I could use a pipette and stuff. Like, I've been in a lab before. I can make concentration. So that's that. And then, most importantly, you want to attach a resume. So, um, I can have more questions at the end of what to include in a resume. And what make sure you attach it. Oh, wow. Me. Lab. Kongsha. T. Columbia. This is the lab I did my winning ISA project in. Um, <clears throat> sorry. The person T, I emailed. Once again, I emailed in May. So, Ming An Jie, Ming An May. My, my, matter. So, what happens? Have a mentor come and respond. They're very, like, busy people. So, when I first sent the original email to Columbia Mentor Shop, on my head and it was like one more week and then they still didn't respond so I was like oh I should probably give up but then but then I was like wait why don't I just send them a second email and then shoot my shot so I said this is my template for a second email just like I'm not sure if you had the chance to read my previous email if not could you kindly read it and then provide me with a response and make sure to thank them for their time and consideration and then they responded like he said, sorry about being slow to respond. Your resume is amazing. Make sure you attach resume. And then, how about we've had like very few high school students, and then he yapped about how he didn't really want to accept high school students. That what? That what? He offered to meet with me, and this was very important. Pawa, like I just wanted to say once again, you don't include resume. Pawa, a lot of mentors are they're very busy. They don't have a lot to read the entire email. Pawa, my email was very long. And sometimes they just like skim, they're like, oh, high school student, come on, I can read through it. That way, if they see something they like in your email or in the resume, they go, oh, like, I should spend time to invest in reading this. And eventually, after my meeting, I'll go to the laptop, work in my laptop. 
Oh, um, one thing I really like to do, it's like low-key kind of stalkerish, that one of the application called MailTrack. And does anyone know what MailTrack could like? Okay, my deadline, this is why you're here today. So MailTrack is this app, not sponsored by the way, although they should sponsor me <laughs> because I use it religiously, but why? You could attach it as an extension to your Gmail and it actually tells you if they open your email or not. So at that time I had it and I realized how many open email comes back. So um, I thought like, if you notice, like when I sent it to here, he responded back with another email. So I could try like alternative emails. So if they read it a lot and then they don't respond, like just follow up, if they don't read it, like if the tracker shows that they didn't even open it, that's even more of a reason you should, you know. So no matter what, follow up. So follow up like two, three times. Okay, that one. And then after you tell me, say, you call out, you have all these results and stuff. So uh, the next step to make, you put the main presentation and usually you have to write an abstract, like no matter what. So I get a lot of questions. Well, how do I write, how do I write an abstract? And me, courtesy of my research teacher, so this all credit to Dr. Sugin Makala a lot. This is where the notes that I take and then I modify. So now I have my data. Now what? A lot of people call Kikwa abstract and Mankha summarize work on well. That wow, not really. So you don't mean an introduction statement. So think like a big overarching statement. Usually people say, let's say um, for me, I said every 40 seconds, like someone loses a life to suicide. It's a very overarching statement. Or sometimes, uh, I mean, Kuan Chi Kao research about coma. She said, like, every, I forgot that, well, like, someone goes blind, like something like that. Like an eye catching statistic. That usually works for a competition. Pack up publications, you want it to be a bit more factual. That, well, that's that. And then the purpose or the objective of your research. Like, what exactly are you filling for the gap? And then the methods. For the methods, me, go to your briefest section. Like one sentence to two sentences at most. How about copy you, expert, and feel already you move one method you feel like. So you want to make sure this correlates with your objectives. And then for your results and discussion, this should be your longest section. Make sure to include your p-values or any quantitative measures that you use to support your research because this is your contribution to the science. You want this to be the longest one. And then finally, conclusion. And make sure you don't forget to include future research. Like what more can be done? So other scientists call that yet to work on the that. So yeah, and a good abbreviation for this is impact, except you switch the P in the end. So impact. I, I might come up with that, but I need to conclude. Okay, so that. And then, Finally, like a last question I got go through, how do I make or print a research board? And in case you didn't notice, throughout this entire presentation, hey, how do I go back? I actually, it's the same exact template I use for all my research projects. So I'm just gonna go back. If you notice the header, like I put introduction and then a sub header and then Eventually, I would get to methodology and then subheader, and then results and discussions, and then subheader. Yeah. Um, keep being impressed, Paula, for this one. I forgot to change this to conclusions, <laughs> and then subheader. So, me go to board, T is half by for us at 23. And I actually used the same layout. I did my board using PowerPoint, so nothing fancy. And then I always make sure in my research to reference figure, like figure half in text. So I also did that throughout the presentation. I could go back that one. My student ran a little too. So um, you want to make sure to reference your figure in the text so it's clear and the judge can follow when you're doing when you're talking. And then for the font, like th this is just what I use. I use like Arial for the title. I use Roboto for the text. Um, people ask me why it's different. I don't have a smart reason as to why. I just like the look of it. And then title of this size, header, subheader, text, caption. You don't want your uh, text or caption to be too small, so you could scale this. I'll post this later, so this is my net format. And then what I use to print my board is there, it, my, I'm very lucky. I come from a good school district. Call me like poster presentation board pick high. That wow, I also go by conference, right? And when I go to conferences, I can't utilize, I can't like monopolize off of my school's resources for that. So I use this um, 
once again, not sponsored, but a lot of people should, um, I'm sure you know, like, Poster Nerd is very good for printing out your poster presentation. I used it for all of my conferences. It comes out very nice. And then you can take, like, a uh, styrofoam board or, like, a big stamp and then just stamp. I think that was my last slide. Yeah. Okay.
my mind is fine, I mean, that well, I could pull it up here, but every time I updated something, like I had before going to experimentation, the layout of my ELISA assays, and during the laboratory assessment, sometimes, like, I accidentally, like, it just, it wasn't like my fault that well, like the tissue for some reason didn't thaw correctly, so I couldn't use it, right? So I thought we might get another like replacement or something like that. And then each time something like changed, I thought I'll make the changes like noted very clearly in my um, lab notebook. Make sure you keep a lab notebook. Wait, let me like show my um, my planning. That what in the meantime, any other question? Uh, how do you get your research published? Oh, published. Okay, so that was actually through my lab. So lab sha, after I wrote it out, I talked with my mentor, and then um, I was like, oh, this I think is like very impactful research. I want to DP him, and then come up. Oh yeah, I agree. So since it was my research, I was first author on it, and then I go, yeah, that part wasn't really like me. I just wrote up a paper, and then my mentor was like, oh, we should do this journal. I actually like have a lot of my course. I think one you touched on Tiba, which is in a very bad, sorry. <laughs> but um, this was like an example of me trying to if it loads. Hello. Oh oh like I did this in Excel that well, I can't open Excel right now, so it was kinda of weird on the sheets. But me keeping track of my research. So how much did each tissue weigh? I would like put it there. And then after the calculations, so if you see the sheet, I'm like very long, very fat. Yeah. So you just want to make sure you write down everything because you never know what you can do. More questions? I actually went to solve this issue, so I'm like not the person that has to like. Oh, my God, I saw ACT. Not bad. Huh? Yeah, ACT. Oh, I saw ACT. Oh, okay. yeah. Two options. Okay. One, ACT. Yeah. No, ACT. ACT called science, so I thought that would be better for me because science can match up with stronger one. Yeah. That yeah. one, you, yeah, you don't need ACT or ACT for research. <laughs> oh, how do you write a resume? Oh, yeah, good question. Okay, so um, for your resume, I mean, are you, I don't expect you guys to be all LinkedIn, but is anyone on LinkedIn? Yeah. Oh, of course you guys are on LinkedIn. It's okay, I have one too. So you kind of just want to copy the LinkedIn layout. In LinkedIn, there's a section for like experiences, skills, volunteering, if you have any, and then just any like pertinent information. Just play around with LinkedIn and then just copy paste LinkedIn directly into like uh, Microsoft Word. Yeah. Well, they ask if you're a professor or a teacher LinkedIn Oh, that's a yeah, that's a good question. So when I first emailed, I meant you LinkedIn, so it's not mandatory. Koa, I mean resume. You could have like one or the other. Now, what I know, if you have a LinkedIn, it doesn't hurt to attach. Nothing's gonna hurt you. Yeah. Let's move on to our interview session. Okay.